You are now listening to episode 33 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers sun, sunscreen, and cancer. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. Welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, this is your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, bringing you the most cutting edge and relevant information on healthcare that's available today. And I'm excited about today's topic because it's, uh, you know, it's a controversial topic. It's also a topic that there's just a lot of questions on, uh, you know, kind of a, a gray area topic. But how do we feel about the sun? Okay, and I'll ask you to answer that question for yourself. You know, are you a person that typically would fall into, I mean, I guess three camps, somebody that loves the sun, that wants to soak it up, that wants to get as much as they possibly can, or somebody that avoids the sun, that wants to block it, that wants to stay inside, that, you know, wants to get the least exposure, uh, typically to avoid things like skin wrinkles, skin cancer, um, you know, aesthetic things, but also health things long term. And then I guess there's a third camp, which is, you know, people that just don't really care that much. Um, But, you know, most people are going to fall into one of those first two camps. You know, do you avoid the sun or do you love the sun? And it's such a controversial topic because, you know, we hear about vitamin D today. You know, that it's very, very rare for even, you know, a, a lay person to not have heard about vitamin D today. You know, it's, it's become a, a pretty typical part of your, you know, yearly physicals. You know, the medical system will, will, will check your vitamin D levels because they know now. They know now how deficient we are. They know now how important vitamin D is. And, you know, we could have a, a, a podcast on vitamin D alone, and, and we will and we should. Uh, but vitamin D is literally one of the most important things that, that's out there, okay? And so one of the most confusing things is that it's called vitamin D. It's actually a hormone, okay? And that's a really important thing, but vitamin D3 is a hormone that regulates so many different functions in your body. You know, some of the obvious ones, you know, vitamin D is important for bone health, um, teeth health, things like that. But, but the biggest one immune system, your immune function. You know, there's certain levels of vitamin D that have been shown to to fight and prevent and avoid cancer. And, and that's anyway why it's becoming so prevalent that we know about vitamin D. So it's you're hard pressed today to find somebody that hasn't had their vitamin D tested and isn't taking a supplement. Now, like I said, we will have another episode on this because a lot of times somebody will come into our office and they will have their blood results and they'll be at a 31 nanograms per milliliter in vitamin D3. Uh, That is not enough. But according to the medical system, 30 is the upper end. So you're perfectly fine if you're at 31. Uh, What most research actually supports is you want to be, you know, 50 to 70 at at the least. Uh, You you could be up to 70, 80, 90. You know, 90 would be like where a lifeguard would be in in the summer. You know, those those really unhealthy, sickly people, those lifeguards. Um, But yeah, so a lot of people are, are afraid of getting too much sun exposure so they take a vitamin D. You know, you can take it orally. You can supplement with it. I believe that everybody should. I also believe that everybody should know what their levels are of vitamin D. But at the same time, so we hear a lot about vitamin D. We know that the sun causes our body to produce it. But we also think that sun exposure causes cancer. So we'd rather take the supplement and avoid the sun. Does that sound like anything that you've heard before or anybody that you know? And that's what I want to talk about today. That's the myth that I want to bust. And I'm not going to tell you, hey, go out and, uh, you know, I'm not very far in either direction on on this topic. You know, I'm not going to say go out and be a lifeguard, go out and sit outside with your shirt off all day and be, you know, so bronze that you're, you you look like uh, your skin looks like a leather handbag, you know, don't do that. But I'm also going to encourage you to not be scared of the sun. So I, I, I hope that today we change your, sh- your we change your thinking, we shift your mindset as far as what you think about the sun. 
the weather's getting nicer now. You know, it's summer. We tend to go outside more. Um, but yeah, I want to know, do you avoid the sun? And, and that's a, a concern because a lot of people do, uh, you know, intentionally avoid the sun. But there was a study that was published in 2014 in the Journal of Internal Medicine. Okay, pretty reputable journal. And this was a study out of the Karolinska Institute, which is in Sweden. And it followed almost 30,000 women, 29,000 and change women, all women, over the course of 20 years. Okay, so if you know anything about research, about studies, that's massive. Okay, N equals 30,000. That's a huge number of subjects. And over the course of 20 years, that's a huge longitudinal study where they followed that for, for that long. Okay, and so what did they find? Literally, this is d- a direct quote from the conclusions of the study. Avoiding sun exposure is a risk for all-cause mortality. Okay, so not only is avoiding sun exposure a risk, the major finding of the study was women who avoided sun exposure, who, you know, on a survey said, I avoid sun exposure, I purposely avoid sun exposure, were literally two times, twice, 200%, twice as likely to die early than those who sunbathed regularly. Okay, that to some of us is shocking. We think, well, my gosh, I've been told for so long to avoid the sun. But, you know, we, we're, we're told two different things. One, bathe in the sun daily, and the other, avoid the sun like the plague. And, and the happy medium is somewhere in between. Okay, so that's exactly what I want to talk about. This goes against everything we hear through the media and the marketing. Uh, most people who avoid the sun, they do so to avoid the risk of skin cancer. But I, I want to ask you something. Do you think that in the past 50 or 100 years, our sun exposure has, let's say 100 years, our sun exposure has gone up or it's gone down? Okay, and, and let's think about this. You know, 100 years ago, 1916, uh, there weren't computers. There weren't, you know, there were barely automobiles. So for the most part, you know, you were outside. There were autos, you know, there were uh, buggies, there were, there were modes of transportation, but for the most part, you weren't inside nearly as often. You might have maybe had a garden, you maybe had a field, or think back, you know, 100 years ago, think back pre-industrial revolution, you yeah, absolutely, there's not even a, a, not even a comparison, like what were you doing in, inside, there's always something to be done outside, hunting, tending to the animals, tending to the garden, just doing the chores. You know, if, even if you watch today, <laughs> this is funny, 2016, you know, watch some of the shows with like the homesteaders in Alaska. You know, they're outside all day long. They're never inside sitting on their butt. They're never sitting on the couch. They're never watching TV. They're never sitting at the computer. So think about that. We got uh, so much more sun exposure back then. Now, let's look at skin cancer. Do you think we have more today or do you think we have less today? We have a dramatic amount more of skin cancer, of all types of cancer. So that alone should point out to you that, you know, we used to have more sun exposure, we used to have less skin cancer. Okay, so the skin cancer and sun exposure are not directly correlated. Now, think about again, pre-industrial revolution, you're outside working in, in your yard, your field, your land, what were you wearing? You weren't wearing a bikini, right? A, a guy wasn't out there working with his shirt off, okay? Even though that might be, you know, what we do today because it's so hot. But no, the, quite the opposite is true. You'd be out there with a flannel shirt on probably with denim overalls and with a wide-brimmed hat, okay? So you're protected from the sun. So that's what I mean is, is I don't want anybody to hear this and think, oh my gosh, I, I got to get in the sun so much more and leave my skin so fully exposed to the sun. You know, I, I'm sure there are, there, there definitely are problems with that. It can lead to aging of the skin, can lead to wrinkles, leads to just oxidation of the skin, but it does not lead to skin cancer. In fact, here is a quote from Dr. Bernard Ackerman. Okay, this is a medical doctor. He was one of the world's biggest authorities on the subject of sun, sunscreen, and skin cancer. And when you start really digging into this and start looking, you know, does A plus B equal C? And it doesn't the way that we sometimes have thought that it does. Well, his quote says, the link between melanoma 
and sun exposure is unproven. And, 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 you know, this is no longer a quote. I'm backing out of that quote. But uh, look this up in the medical literature. The link is completely unproven. There might be some, some studies that point in that direction. There might be some people that draw some conclusions that one leads to another. But there's absolutely no proven link between melanoma and sun exposure. There's no conclusive evidence that sunburns lead to cancer. I don't think that sunburns are good. I'm not trying to get them. I'm not trying to give my kids sunburns by any means. I'm trying to avoid them. But there's no real proof. There's no real evidence that sunburns lead to cancer. This is once again, you know, going back to his quote. I'm just going to read it. The link between melanoma and sun exposure is unproven. There's no conclusive evidence that sunburns lead to cancer. There is no real proof that sunscreens protect against melanoma, and there's no proof that increased exposure to the sun increases the risk of melanoma. So many of us, many of us, many of us believe that the same way that we believe that vaccines are actually helping prevent these diseases. You may have heard of the recent outbreak of mumps at Harvard. 40 people have mumps at Harvard Medical School. They're all vaccinated. So what is the common perception is that, oh, well, vaccines protect against disease. What is the common perception? Well, well, sunscreen protects against skin cancer. If you think that, then of course it makes sense. Of course you're going to do it. But why do you think that? Who told you that? Where is the evidence? Where is the science? Is that what's really proven in the medical literature? No, it's not. Okay, so that is not proven. You want to look into that. You can, you know, you can read plenty of uh, plenty of stuff about that. But that's something that you, you, know, you have to shift your thinking. You have to change your mindset. The way that you view the sun and sun exposure. Now, once again, going back, like I said, doesn't mean that you need to spend all day outside in a bikini. Doesn't mean that you need to spend all day outside with your shirt off. Doesn't mean that you know you need to to buy a boat and and you know go live go live on an island or or something like that. But it means that you just need to think a little more logically and a little more paleo style. You know, sometimes I hate the word paleo, but it just means think about the way that we were designed. Think about the way that people were doing things 100, 200, 300 years ago. Think about the way that people dress in a sun exposed area of the world, you know, like maybe along the equator. Sure, they wear less clothing there because they it's really hot, but their skin is adapted to it. They're darker skin. You look at the way the light skinned people dress in, in, in sunny environments, you know, in, in uh, the Middle East, 90% of their skin is covered up, men and women, all the time. So it's not that you need to just douse yourself in exposure, but a, a little bit of exposure on a regular basis is the most important thing. So I want to give you a couple action steps, a couple things that you can do um, to, to, to really you know, get yourself exposed to the sun while also keeping your risk of any damage down to a minimum. The first one is just cover up. You know, if you're going to be out in the sun, cover up. Think about the way that people used to do things 100 years ago, 200 years ago. They, weren't, they didn't avoid the sun by staying inside. They avoided the sun by covering up. Nowadays, we don't want to cover up because we don't want to get hot. We don't want to sweat. You know, that's a, another problem is, you know, that we'll, we'll, well, I can't wear this outside. I'm going to be so hot. Well, poor you, big deal. You're going to sweat. That's what your body's supposed to do. That's a cooling mechanism. That's a detoxification mechanism. We're so scared of sweat. We don't want to smell. Whereas, you know, 100, 200 years ago, the smell of sweat was an attractive thing. That's a very, very natural process. We want to be sweating. I don't know why you would ever want to not sweat. That's like not wanting to pee or poop. That means you want to keep those things in your body. Why? Why would you want those things in your body? Your body wants to get rid of them. But cover them up. Cover your kids up. You know, get a hat. A uh, hat covers a, a ton of sun, especially midday sun when it's overhead. Get a lightweight, long sleeve shirt. Get lightweight, long sleeve pants. All these things don't make you much hotter, don't make you much more uncomfortable, but they still cover you up. Still, some of your skin is exposed to the sun. Maybe your hands, your wrists, your forearms, your neck, your cheeks, your calves, if you're wearing like a capri pant or something, you know. But that's enough that you're going to get sun exposure and produce vitamin D. 
So you don't need your full body to every inch to be hit by sunlight to start producing vitamin D. You only need a very little bit. And you don't need all day exposure either. You know, a, a few minutes up to a half hour, an hour of exposure is going to bump your vitamin D up considerably. And it's going to be a lot better than, you know, going on a week-long vacation to Florida. You know, vitamin D is kind of like, like exercise. You know, you could go on a week-long exercise binge where you're just cranking out exercise, but is it really affecting you positively in the long term? No. What's way more effective is exercising 10 minutes a day for the rest of your life, 30 minutes a day for the rest of your life, 30 minutes every other day for the rest of your life, much, much, much more effective than you know going for a 12-hour hike and, and just saying that you did it. Same thing with the sun exposure, same thing with vitamin D. The second one is take smaller doses of sunlight more often, like you know we just mentioned. Uh, and the third one is if you're going to go to the pool, you're going to go to the beach, you're going to go to the water park, you're going to be spending time out on the boat. I, I'm not a, a expecting you to wear a sweatshirt while you're out on a boat or wear, you know, a, uh, you know, take an umbrella with you to lagoon. Um, there are times in today's society that we want to be out doing those things. Man, I love doing those things when I was a kid every single day. I'm not exaggerating. Every single day, I would ride my bike to the pool and swim at the pool every single day. It was a blast. But what you can do is get a non-toxic sunscreen. There's a lot of homemade DIY recipes. There's a lot you can do to, to find a non-toxic sunscreen. But a lot of these sunscreens, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle that we think, oh my gosh, we need to avoid the sun because it causes skin cancer. So what do we do? We slather ourselves, we slather our kids with these sunscreens. You can see it. I mean, you can see it. They're white when they're in your hand. You rub it into your skin. The white color disappears. What does that mean? Where is it going? It's going into you. It's going into your skin. It's soaking into your skin. And you're putting on a crap load of it. You're putting on a ton of it. So if there's toxins in there and you're going out, say, you know, I'm a guy. If I was going to be outside, I'm covering my entire upper body with this lotion. Okay, my entire upper body, every single square inch of it with this one lotion. If there are toxins in there, which you better believe there are, go back and listen to our episodes about personal care products. You'll hear about the hormone disruptors, the endocrine disruptors that are in our personal care products. If there are toxins in there, you're getting a lot of it. Okay, I'm not talking about putting a little lotion on your nose. Most people, they're putting it on their entire body. So find a good sunscreen. We use one from a company called Pure Haven Essentials really, really impressed with the quality of their products, really, really impressed. My wife is more with the, I don't know, the, the quality of the products, yeah, like using them. The lotions, the makeup removers, they, they work. Okay, so a lot of times, you know, non-toxic deodorants, non-toxic things, you know, they, they're, they're questionable about how, how much they work, like a deodorant. Like, does it, I still stink, so is this really working? Um, but that's a good one, Pure Haven Essentials. Probably the best resource for this, the best resource that's really out there, really when it comes to anything toxicity-wise, the best resource that we always point people to is the Environmental Working Group. Okay, so you can go on to ewg.org, and they have an awesome sunscreen database there. They also have a Skin Deep database. It's over 20,000 skincare products that have been tested, but they have a separate guide for sunscreens. And so I was just on their, their page just looking at it. And one of the things I clicked on was, what's the, the 2015 sunscreen hall of shame? Okay, so I want to go through some of these things that are in the hall of shame so that you can avoid these. Uh, here's, here's the first thing is the things to banish from your beach bag, they say. Number one, spray sunscreens. They can be inhaled, you're breathing them in, and they don't cover your skin completely. Number two, anything with an SPF value above 50. They try to trick you into believing that they're going to prevent sun damage. SPF protection says tops out at 30 to 50. So you're going for the 70 plus, you've got a pale skin kid, you know, i got you know, twins, and one's considerably lighter com complexity than the other one. But it doesn't mean that I'm putting 70 on 
one and 40 on the other. 30, 40, 50 is protecting them plenty, and we don't even go up that high. Uh, oxybenzone, that's one of the ingredients you can look for. It can disrupt the hormone system. It's a known endocrine disruptor. Uh, another one is called retinol palmitate, and it may trigger damage in, in your body, possibly cancer. Okay, so a possible carcinogen. So now when I look through the 11 worst spray sunscreens and the 12 worst sunscreen lotions, I'll read these off. But one of the things that I notice right away is like, if you came up to me on the street, or we came up to any of you that are listening, and we said, name four brands of sunscreen. These are the brands that you're going to name. So I'm going to read the 12 worst sunscreen lotions. I'm not going to read the sprays because we already said that the sprays are bad. Get rid of them. So here are the worst sunscreens. They all are above 50 SPF. They all contain oxybenzone. They all contain retinol palmitate. Some of these can contain other surfactants and emulsifiers, not emulsifiers, but surfactants to make them smooth, go on your skin smooth. And you know, if you've ever used a natural sunscreen, it doesn't go on very well. You see the guy that looks like a dork with the the all white nose where he purposely didn't rub it in or the you know the the lifeguard with the white nose that that's that's a little more appropriate than these ones that soak right into your skin but here they are first one brand name banana boat okay we all know that that might be the most common one uh second one brand name copper tone Okay, so those two brands would for sure be the, the two most well-known brands, uh, in my opinion, or at least, you know, where I come from. But Banana Boat, Sport Performance. So what's that going to be marketed as? Sport Performance, Sweat Proof. Uh, you know, it's not going to – you can be out playing sand volleyball. You can be out playing basketball. It's, you're not going to lose your sunscreen. That's the Sport Performance Sunscreen Lotion SPF 100. That was the number one. Copper Tone, Sport Performance sunscreen lotion. So sports, high performance, you want to avoid those those buzzwords. Uh, SPF 100 was number two on the worst sunscreens. Copper tone, SPF 75 was number three. Copper tone, sport sunscreen stick was number four. Ultra guard, copper tone, ultra guard sunscreen lotion, number five. The next three are CVS brands, CVS sport, CVS Sun Lotion and C, uh, SPF 100 and CVS Sun Lotion SPF 70. So, you know, really well-known store, really well-known brand. I'll tell you, if, if my family and I were on vacation and, and, and see, say we're a typical American family, maybe not, maybe not us, but my sisters, any of my, anybody I know really, if they're on vacation and they didn't have a sunscreen, where are they going to go? They're going to go to CVS. They're going to go to the gas station. Get something quick while you're fueling up the boat or while you're, you know, you stock in the cooler to go out and have a, you know, sun-drenched picnic. Well, guess what else CVS and the gas station sells? Hats, sunglasses. So there's better options other than the sunscreens. Uh, next one, Neutrogena. Okay, so a brand that we all know, Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Daily Liquid Sunscreen, SPF 70. Uh, the next two are a, a company called No Ad or No AD. It's maybe I don't know, but um, I recognize that. You know, I'm just seeing it here on a list, but I, I can picture the label. I've seen that. You know, maybe uh, probably not around my house, but around people that we've been with on vacations or, or out out and about. Uh, we've seen this. Um, let's go down here. Eleven worst sunscreens for kids too. So that is, uh, you know, we're looking at once again the the EWGs. Uh, resources here. Banana Boat Clear, Ultra Mist, Kids, Max Protect and Play, Continuous Spray Sunscreen, SPF 110. Most parents are going to look at that and say, oh my gosh, this one has everything. I'm going to get this one. It's clear. It's a spray. It's, uh, you know, playful. It's, it's like one of the sweat-free ones. And it's SPF 110. We're going to block all the sun from ever getting to our kid's skin. And that's exactly what you're doing. You block all the sun, which means that your body can't produce vitamin D. You block the UV ray absorption. Your body does not convert those UV, U, UV rays into vitamin D. You're essentially blocking your body from fighting cancer rather than doing the opposite or doing what most people think they're doing, preventing cancer. So banana boat, worst one. Coppertone Kids, Coppertone Kids, Coppertone Kids. Oh, Wacky Foam 
foaming lotion sunscreen. I would love to see the label on that one. I'm sure it's got a bunch of crap in it. And because it's wacky foam, it's probably like blue or red or has dyes in it too. I'm, I'm sure it's just loaded with toxins. Copper tone babies, copper tone babies, Equate. Okay, Equate, popular uh Popular brand name, kind of like a generic brand name. Equate, though, we've all seen that brand. The next one's Kroger. Okay, I live in Utah now. People in Utah don't know what Kroger is, but you know Kroger is one of the largest grocery store chains. So you know, really popular grocery store brand. Kroger baby sunscreen, Kroger kids sunscreen. They're both on there. Uh, Neutrogena wet skin kids beach and pool sunblock spray. Now, if I'm a marketer. And I want people to buy my sunscreen. What do I want to, to think? Okay, this is going to work even when your kid jumps in the pool. This is going to work even when your kid is out playing. This is going to work even when your kid is, you know, doing whatever. And you only have to put it on once. Put it on once. You don't have to reapply. It sounds a lot easier as a parent. So, of course, they're going to market these things really well. The next one is called Up and Up. I've never heard of that brand. Up and Up Kids Sunscreen Stick SPF 55. So look through these, you know, find these nasty ingredients and find out what they do, but start looking through yours personally. Um, I, I think that personal care products are, you know, a huge, huge, huge concern. But once again, we always talk about they're, they're one drop in the bucket when we look at toxins. But when it comes to our kids especially, you know, it's one thing for me to add toxins to my life. I, I don't want to do it. I, I, I avoid them like the plague. But my goodness, am I a lot more conscientious of it with my kids. I do not want to add toxins, hormone disrupting, cancer causing, endocrine disrupting toxins to them when they're young, especially with the, you know, as girls, you know, girls, there's just a lot more hormonal issues with girls, a lot more cycling, obviously. And, and, you know, infertility is on the rise, autoimmune conditions that are on the rise, metabolic diseases on the rise. My goodness, the last thing that I want to do is do anything that could possibly encourage these things. And that's not to say that we're paranoid. I wouldn't describe us as paranoid at all. But we recognize that it's a real concern and that it's a real danger. And we look at these things. And that's the only thing that I would encourage you to do. Look at what are your kids being exposed to as far as, you know, what's more dangerous, the sun or the chemicals? What's more dangerous, being outside or being inside? Uh, I'm going to say every single time being inside is more dangerous. Avoiding the sun is more dangerous. The Journal of Internal Medicine is going to confirm that. Uh, and, And one other study that I just didn't mention here, let's see. Yeah, so there's another another study that I forgot that I had in my resources here. There's another one out of Sweden. It's from 2000. And it looked at melanoma rates with people who use sunscreen more or less often. And what they found was not only did sunscreen not decrease the rate of melanoma, it actually increased the rate of melanoma in people who used it more often. Okay, so that's one of the conclusions was maybe the people that used it more often, they're just in the sun more often. But, you know, there's a lot of things you could read into there. But are those truly related? And are you actually, you know, inhibiting your child's production of vitamin D, an important cancer fighter? Or are you encouraging that? Food for thought, food for thought, especially as we move into summer, we start going on vacations, uh, we do more boating, we do more picnicking, we do more climbing, it's hot, we do more water parks, we do all those fun things that we love, we do them, you guys, we definitely do them, um, and I love them, but I think about them probably a little bit different than you do. So just change your thinking, change the way that you're, you view these things, and then go out and have some fun this summer. Um... Yeah, that's all. That's all I want to add off with. So uh, awkward, awkward outro here. But hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully it changes your thoughts. If you have any comments, you have any questions, you have any concerns, you want to know more, you want more resources, please, please, please send us an email, comment on the YouTube page, uh, look us up online. We are Align Utah is our clinic where we help people in person and, and, you know, occasionally uh, digitally um, or remotely. But if you're in Utah, you know, come check us out, get some information, get some transformation. But also just keep digging into this, keep learning about this. Change the way that you think about the way that you're treating your health and your family's health. 
So once again, this is Dr. Taylor Crick for The Real Health Podcast, bringing you the most cutting edge and relevant information on your healthcare today so that you can develop the strongest version of yourself. Thanks. Have a good day. Have a great, great summer and get out there and get a little bit of sun, but not too much, but get enough. Thanks. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.